In this video, I'm going to show you how I caped out this caribou today for a shoulder mount or a pedestal mount. This is my daughter's caribou. She just took this caribou a little over seven hours ago. We're back home now. We're in my shop. And I'm going to show you the cuts I made to properly cape out this caribou. First thing I did, I have the legs at the knee joint. I cut it around. Each knee joint right where it bend, naturally bends at. Then I cut up the back side of the leg. That's gonna meet my center cut, which is your halfway point around the animal. That's where my center cut was, halfway around the animal. Whatever, cape, whatever you're caping out. Here's my legs up the back inside of the leg, cut over to your center cut. And that's done for each leg. You may not be able to do that on an animal that's big like a caribou or a moose. You may just need to do one leg at a time, one side. So for this one, the way it was le leaning on a hill, I made my center cut from the ground all the way over to the ground, as far as I can go. Knee joint, cut it around up the back side of the leg to my center cut. Then I skinned this over. At the same time, I'm, I zipped it up the back, dead center down the middle, not off center or wavy cut, but dead center down the middle of the back. And I stopped my cut right here, just before the ears. You're gonna see a natural V hair pattern. That's where you're gonna stop your cut at. Once you have that zipped up the back, take your knife upside down, cut it up the back slowly. Make sure it's straight line, dead center. Don't want to be on the side of the caribou or have a wavy cut. You can skin this around all the way up as high as you can get. Remember, the rest of this is still, is still attached to the carcass. You haven't skinned this yet. Take your front quarter off. Come back here, take care of your rear quarter. And today what I did is I uh, gutted it after that, was on a downhill slope, I gutted it, took out the organs I wanted to keep, pushed the rest down the hill, took my uh, tenderloins, rib meat, and then I flipped it over. Did the, the same thing on the other side. Flip my caribou over, or my daughter's caribou, it's her second caribou in the past couple weeks. I did the same thing over here. I cut from the ground to the ground to finish my circle cut. Midway around the animal, halfway at your halfway point. That's gonna put you eight to 10 inches behind the front leg. That's where you wanna be at for your, your uh, middle cut here for your cape. I've already cut this line down the middle of the back. So I skinned it all the way up. Did the same thing to this leg. Up, Cut it around the knee joint right where it bends. Cut up the back of the leg over to your back of your center cut here. Make sure you're not taking that cut behind the leg and butchering up the armpit area. Be cautious when you're doing that. It's just straight up the back of the leg and over to your center cut. Same thing on this side. I skinned forward, took out the front quarter, rear quarter, Rib meat, tenderloins, all that stuff. Got the back straps off. Then I separated this cape just like this, right where it naturally bends at on the vertebrae. My daughter held the rack. I can you can do it by yourself, but my daughter was there. She held the rack. I maneuvered around the, the neck, popped it around right where it touched the, the skull. And then skin it around and then release the cape from the carcass. Set it up to the side. Now that we have this animal caped out, there's no huge neck piece hanging out here attached to your cape. So for a cape or a hide or anything, time is of the essence. It was 39 degrees this morning when uh, we left to go on this hunt. It was 77 degrees by the time we got back to the truck. There's no time to mess around. You're going to have 
flies out there trying to lay eggs on your cape or your hide or your rack in the velvet rack you need to keep a game bag over each antler and the head that's what we did out there put a huge game bag over the whole thing tied knot no flies can get in there lay any eggs once the whole cape is off same thing we put the rest of the cape inside the game bag tied it off no flies around there to lay any eggs on any of this Back home seven hours later after he was shot in my shop to cape the caribou off the skull. That's what I'm going to show you now. The first thing I do on any animal, I already started a little bit, I cut bottom of the bottom teeth for the lip all the way around. I like looking at this, I want to keep all the lip skin. I can do it from the back, but I prefer to do it this way. I want to pull the cape off the skull. Keeping all the lip skin, all the eye skin, the nose cartilage, cutting the ears where they enter into the skull, not way up high like I see a lot of times. So right now I'm just skinning this around. I want to keep all this lip skin. Like I said, I like, I like looking at this when I do it. If you prefer to do it from the back, that's fine too. Just make sure you keep everything you're supposed to. And I'll peel this down around, but it's right before the eyes, right where it gets tight at. That's where I'm going to stop at. Caribou have no top teeth. You want to start as low as you can on the lip line here, keeping all that lip skin. Every animal. Their nose curves here. Be aware of that when you're getting the nose cartilage. You can't just cut back with your knife straight. You're gonna hit that bone, you can't go anywhere. Just cut through the nose cartilage. You wanna keep that lip skin while you're at it. Pull these lips back. Get your knife way back in the back, or scalpel, but for a sharp scalpel, keeping all that lip skin. All this is needed to mount your animal. The actual, actual nostril is cartilage. It's tougher. You have to work out a little more. Have a sharp knife. Don't go fast. Don't cut yourself. Try not to cut a hole in the hide. Cape. I'm at the top of the nose here. I want to keep all this cartilage. I just peel it over as far as you can go. Before it gets too tight, you can't go any further. That's about as far as I can go for the nostrils and the lips at this point. I'm gonna go through the back for the rest and eventually loop around here where I've already done this work at. Obviously this rack is in full velvet. You wanna be mindful when you're caping around the antlers not to go too high up on the velvet and cut that off and not to keep Virtually hardly any hair around touching the base of the antlers. You don't want to have a big old tuft of hair here that should have been on your cape that is now attached to your rack. That's not how it should be. I'm going to get a new first blade. I haven't done my diamond triangle cut yet. To the back of the skull. Like I said before, there's a hair pattern here. You can see it. 
On most animals, this one's kind of faint, but you want to take your center cut here that you've already cut, cut to the back of each antler. Not the side, around the ear, or the, on the front, to the very back of the antler. That's what I'm going to do now. My knife is upside down right now, looking for the burr of that antler. I'm at the base of the antler here, you can feel the burr. Take my knife upside down, right on the edge of that velvet where it meets the hair at. If you have a little bit of hair attached to the, the base of the antler, no big deal. If you got a big old one inch piece of hair there, your cape's no good. As little as possible attached around the antler. That sound you just heard, that was me separating the base of the ear right where it enters into the skull. You're gonna have a little tiny hole the size of your pinky. You do not wanna cut this ear way up high, an inch or two, cutting the bottom of the ear off. That ruins your cape. You slowly go around the antler and separate it. It's a little easier when it's hard horn. When it's velvet, you need to go a little bit slower. But you need to get the cape off the skull as soon as you can. I mean, if I killed it today and I kept it cool and dry, no bugs can get on it until tomorrow morning, that's fine, depending on the temperature. But if I kill it today, which is Saturday, and Monday evening, it still hasn't been taken off the skull, chances are the hair is going to slip on the cape. Your cape's no good. It will not be accepted. It will not be useful for a mount. I'm gonna go to the back of the other antler. Now to give you my diamond flap here, triangle flap. I want you to start that, to skin that flap up. When I get done here pulling this off the cape with the skull, I'll show you all the parts of it. No need to rush this process, just go slow. Pay attention to detail so you don't ruin your cape. Cut holes in the cape or cut yourself. I'm gonna go over to this ear here, separate that from the skull. Once again, you hear that sound, that's where I separated the base of the ear where it was attached to the skull. You can see a hole here about the size of my pinky. That's how it should look. Not a huge hole. It's the size of an inch and a half or two. And don't just get crazy and pull the cape that's still attached to the velvet. You can actually rip a huge strip of velvet off your rack if you do that. Just go slow.
Start skinning around. The hardest part of this whole thing is going around the antlers. Once you're past that, it's easy. Once you do it a few times, it should be no problem at all. You just gotta think about what you're doing. You wanna keep all the eye skin. You wanna cut the ears where it touches the skull. You wanna keep all the lip skin. You wanna keep the, no the uh, nostril cartilage. You do not wanna cut off the eyelashes, eyelids, have huge chunks of hair around the antlers. Just think about each step and just go slow. Try not to have a ton of jagged cuts all around the burr here. It's gonna happen sometimes, but just as best you can, try to avoid that. You need to keep your cakes cool and dry, just like you do your meat. I'm coming around to the front of the antler here, and I'll pop it away, and the next thing I have is the eyes. This last little bit, this little strand, if you get crazy, that's when you actually can rip it and rip the velvet. You don't want to do that. So I'm actually separated away from each handler. Next, I'll have the eyes. That's the hardest part right there, separating this. Now I'm moving to the front, getting the eyes. Now skim down all the way to the work I've already done on the nostrils and the lip skin. When you do the eyes, keep all the eye skin attached to the cape. Keep the eyelashes attached to the cape. Keep the eyelids attached to the cape. There should not be a huge two inch hole for an eye. All this stuff here needs to stay. Only thing that should be inside the skull is the eyeball itself. If you run into an area where it's tight, where you're trying to work at, you may need to go to another area such as the bottom of the skull here, which I just did, near the lip line. Release some of that tension there, and you can go back to the eye where you're trying to skin it there. Now I'm starting to see the blue of the eyeball. I want to take my fingers, squeeze this eye skin, put my knife upside down, cutting to the back of each antler, keeping the eyeball in the skull and all the skin attached to the cape. Once you've accomplished this, then you have the tear duct, which should not be a huge hole when you're done. You can actually dig that out with your knife and it's intact. If you do have a hole at the tear duct, try to make it as small as possible. And right as soon as you get past the eye, that's when you hit the tear duct. I take my knife upside down, cutting back towards the antler, going underneath the tear duct, keeping that intact. I can already see the back corner of this lip. They all have the U shape here. Take my knife, cut back towards the antlers again. I can see the back corner of this lip. I need to keep all that lip skin. Once I release some of this, the whole thing is eventually going to wrap around. I just pull it right off the skull. But you have to do it one area at a time, go back to another area. You're kind of fighting it if you just keep working in one spot. If I cut here a little bit, then cut here a little bit, everything seems 
the flow pretty good pulling the skull out. I just got the tear duct done. I need to do the other eye, release some tension so I can continue further on the other side. It's the exact same thing. All the eye skin, eyelashes, eyelids is still attached to this cape. And that's what you need to have a mountable cape. If your blade gets dull, sharpen it. Or if you're using a scalpel, get a new blade. The duller the knife, the more pressure you gotta put. You're gonna end up cutting yourself or cutting holes all in the hide. I'm at the tear duct, cut down the way. I haven't cut any holes. Inside the tiny hole up here by the nose when I first started. Accidents happen, but it's just a tiny hole. There is no hole at the tear duct here. Same thing, peel that lip skin away in the back corner. Go back to where I was over here, continue to pull the skull up. Now I'm on top of the nose, bridging the nose. Remember I've already done all that work in the front in the beginning when I was looking at it. I got the lip skin, the nose cartilage, that's all done right about to this point. Once I get this side done, I'm gonna loop this cape all the way around the nose. Don't forget, the chin area, you need to loosen that skin as well. I'm coming up to the cuts I've already made, which I can just loop this around here in a second. See that I just pulled it around the skull. I've already done this work, so I'm just taking the last little bit off on the bridge of the nose. And I'm going to show you each part of the cape. So here you go. Here's the skull. I still have to cut the rack for the skull cap and then uh, preserve the velvet. But there's very little hair from the cape around the base of these antlers. The eyeballs are still in the skull. There's no lip skin. There's no very little nose cartilage at all on here. All the stuff I need is on the cape. And the ears are cut away right where it touches the skull. Now if your skull looks like this, after you cape out your caribou, deer, whatever you're caping out, you've done it correctly. You still need to keep it cool and dry. Bring it to me as soon as you can. Once you get back to town after your hunt, if you cannot bring this into the shop as soon as possible, freeze whatever you have. That means pulling the cape off the skull like I just did, putting this in the freezer, wrapping it up fur to fur, raw side on the outside, and freezing it until you bring it into the shop. And then cutting your rack, your skull cap, cleaning that up, all the meat and the brains, all taking all that stuff out before you bring, even bring it in here. Don't just sit the head on the floor and bring it to me and he has maggots all over the place. That's not taking care of it properly. I'm gonna show you every part of this cape. So 
Some of the main issues I see, people cut the cape too short. Like up into here short. You're, you're a foot and a half to 18 inches short on your cape. Cut where I told you, midway of the animal. Another thing I see a lot, cuts up in the brisket. This is the brisket area. There's no cuts in here. I did not just get to my animal or my daughter's animal and rip a huge gut cut up the belly real quick. That's gonna totally ruin your cape. Take your cape off first. This is the leg flaps. There's no cuts up into here. There's no cuts up into the armpits here. So I have a leg flap, leg flap, and a brisket with no butcher cuts up into here. I cut halfway around my animal. My cape is long enough for my daughter's mount. I have all the nose cartilage. I have all the lip skin. All the way around, bottom lip, corners of the lips, the whole thing. I'm not missing anything. I have all the eyelashes, eyelids. I got the tear duct. There's not even a hole there on either side. I have the ears separated right where it touches the skull. And then I have my diamond V-shaped flap here. I see all kinds of crazy cuts here. This should resemble some kind of V pattern. Stop right before the ears. V to back of each antler. Don't just cut all up in here and have all kinds of crazy cuts. One smooth piece here. When I go to sew it back together, it's nice and easy. If you can do this to your cape, your cape is mountable. Just keep it cool and dry. Freeze it if you need to once you get back home. I hope this video helps for caping out any animal you're trying to save for a shoulder mount or a pedestal mount. Make a really nice, I believe my daughter wants a wall pedestal. Make a really nice wall pedestal for her at this cape.